Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva. And I'm delighted now, and I'm probably going to get her name a bit mashed up. It's Finnish. It's Anna Kovnemi. How's that? That's perfect. <laughs> You're leader of um, Google Deep Mind. Of course, you would naturally be here. Um, the key question is about AI and uh, influence on sustainable development goals. Tell me about that. First of all, thank you for be inviting me here. It's an honor to be here with the people who care about the planet so much. Um, I'm, first of all, very delighted to see more action and more interest of leveraging AI for SDGs. Um, ITU has some, done some report and Google has also done some report to inspire people to see the potential. I think we see similar numbers, increase of 300 plus percent of the use cases of AI for the SDGs. We need to also continue to address the gaps of getting people access to that, which is access to data and, and right capabilities that are equitable, that everybody can do these use cases. And we need to continue to do it in a responsible way. You gave a speech here and uh, you gave a specific example, climate change. Tell me about that. Yeah, AI in climate says is a big opportunity. Some research, I believe, uh, say that it's five to five to ten percent reduction of the of the CO two. I shared three examples which we have been actually working in the last 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 year. Um, I shared the story of the the measuring uh, climate, which is the Graphcast, which is the AI based model to actually predict ten day weather predictions. I gave a story of um, OPF, which is the optimal power flow, which is helping to mitigate and integrate renewables to the grid and also, um, also adjust grid predictions to the future of electrification. And I gave an example of more using scientific methods to do biological advancements to adapt to the future, which was the AlphaFold case and the team that is using enzymes to break plastics. Great. Another thing which is a hot topic right now, we're talking about a lot, is um, AI systems can actually increase inequalities. It can create through bias. Um, and the idea is we need trust, we need inclusivity and accessibility. So what are you doing as leader of DeepMind? So first of all, internally, we have a lot of practices uh, to ensure that when we develop and deploy the model, they are responsibly done. And I think that these practices should be or any good practices of doing that should be deployed in any organization that is developing models and deploying them. There are practices like evaluations, benchmarks, etc. But also important is that we look forward. Um, and that was we as a Google Deep Mind, we're doing research of longer term implications of the AI. For example, already 2021, we did the research of potential risks and of course benefits, but what are the downsides of LLMs? We have done research on persuasion. We have done research on AI agent and what do we need to actually do to make sure that they are safely and responsibly deployed. That is not enough. We also need to make sure that AI is developed uh, by diverse and accessible to diverse talent. I talked about it already earlier, but I want to emphasize that making sure that these systems are developed by diverse talent helps us to also understand what are the potential biases they have. And lastly, um, we just need to make sure that everybody understands what is AI. So pursuing AI literacy, which we are, for example, doing through our Experience AI, which is a course for teachers of 11 to 14 year old children, nine different courses to make sure that teachers can tell every single child what AI actually is and what are the risks and benefits of it. Interesting. So we will hear a lot about the negatives. Tell me about what's got you excited about the positives looking ahead. Well, I sound like a broken record to talk about AlphaFold again, but I have to say that, especially taking that we took it this, uh, the latest version out a few weeks ago, it keeps me shocked or positively surprised how excited these structural biologists are with the technology they get in hands. When I talk to them, and they are now 1.8 million users of the AlphaFold 2, uh, but when I talk to, about them, how they use it, they're they are saying it changed their work. That they used to work three to five years, to, and sometimes longer, to fold a protein or understand interactions. And now they get it on second. And it's not only the ones who had access to, the ex to experimental methods, but it's also the millions of scientists who never could afford or did have an access of the X-ray uh, machines that, or the, the, the machines that uh, were basically pro folding protein. In Africa, there is no single one. 
And now we, with AI, we can enable people, democratize actually access to the science. It's a broken record story, but I, I, it's so but I can, exciting. Yeah, I, mean, I can understand why that's exciting, absolutely. Uh, this is your second year in a row you've come here. So as you've been wandering around, what's your vibes? What's your, what are you taking away? First of all, I'm impressed how much more interest it has tracked. Uh, I think we have a more than double the, the audience we had last year, uh, which is a positive sign, which means that people want to do good with AI. Uh, secondly thing, I think that there is a more diverse set of participants. I've met myself a lot of researchers here, which I think is fantastic because we need a bigger bench of researchers who can leverage AI to advance science. And I think there has been emerging, but I would welcome even more talks about responsibility and safety and have those practitioners also invited here so we can jointly discuss how do we advance that. Okay, the message has gone through. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's Anna Kovanimi from Google DeepMind and we'll have much more coming up from AI for Good here in Geneva, so do stay tuned. Mm -hmm.